Good morning, guys. Welcome to the live version of Coffee with Cream. And um, I'm really excited because I have Yaya Alaya. She's going to be today's guest. And as I said, um, you know, we're under quarantine, so we can't do Coffee with Cream in the coffee shop. And uh, so we're doing it on live, and I'm in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, is in at, you're in Atlanta, right? I'm in Birmingham, actually. Oh, Birmingham. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, yeah. So, good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Outside, enjoying nature. So, y'all may yeah. hear a few nature sounds. This yeah. <laughs> no, I need nature sounds. I need some nature sounds. So, how are you? I am amazing. So good morning, everyone that's saying good morning. I'm so happy that everyone is awake right now. So I got my, I got my coffee. <laughs> I got me some tea, some green tea, a little bit of agave in there. Yeah, I started to make tea this morning. I was going to make some uh, turmeric tea mm. and I didn't have time to make it the way I wanted to make it. So yeah. my latte is a lot easier to make. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I started to make me some coffee. I mean, my go-to is, like, black coffee with a little bit of caramel. Uh -huh. But yeah. today, I was like, I'm going to go the tea route. Oh, yes. I usually make <laughs> lattes with um, honey and almond milk. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, today, guys, we're going to be talking about the Netflix special, Self Made. And it's loosely based on the Matt of C.J. Walker story. But the other cool thing about Self Made was it, it was really about empowering women and other people that are on their entrepreneurial endeavors. So most people that follow me, you guys know what I do. You know I'm an entrepreneur. You know I do media marketing PR. You also know I own 216B radio station. But I have Yaya on here. She does a lot of stuff in media as well. So, um, and you guys know I have a podcast, so she has her podcast too. So, um, do you want to get into everything that's all you, or do you want to talk about self made versus self -made? Um, I could do a quick little intro. So, sorry about that. So, my name is Samaya Stewart. I yeah. go by Yaya, that's my nickname, and I am 28 years old. And so, I'm a media girl. So, I work with Media Girls Network, which is based in Atlanta. And yeah. I make playlists for them and sometimes do interviews as well for them. That's how we met at the um, yeah. Black Women's Expo. Yeah. I also. Um, have a book club which is based here in Birmingham but we also have a lot of members in Atlanta and it's called Books and Brunch. I'm yes. going to wear my shirt Black Girl Book Gang so y'all yes. can follow Books and Brunch which is Books X Brunch so Books Times Brunch on Instagram and I also have my podcast the Candidly Yaya podcast and that is Candidly Yaya podcast on uh, Instagram so y'all can follow that as well where I talk about the woman experience millennial experience and the black experience because I'm yes. all three so yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> That's a little so bit on me so speaking in regards to um and tying the self-made Netflix special into um our conversation um it was based on loosely based on Madam CJ Walker and you know based on that Netflix special she was determined no matter what to succeed she was determined no matter what definitely tenacious like, get her business please. off the ground you could she not, was not play no games no you she was not playing at all so um what way would you say that you're somewhat similar to Madam C.J. Walker when it comes to you Ooh. building your brand? Um, Being similar to her is a stretch because yeah. <laughs> I'm still, like, <laughs> learning and trying. Yeah. Like, I was inspired by um, the Netflix miniseries just because, you know, just seeing her determination and how she was a go-getter in a completely <laughs> different era than what we live in today. Like, of course, we face our obstacles which I talk about a lot on um, my own podcast, but mm -hmm. back then it was completely different. You know, they were fresh off the plantation. Um, yeah. You know, she was born free, but her parents weren't. And right. so for you to go literally from nothing, from zero um, to being black and on top of that being a female and then just becoming self-made, which is a completely yeah. different term in today's time. We all know. Yeah. 
But um, back then, self-made, they were really self-made, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, her and Annie Malone were just, they were pioneers. And so just to see that, it inspires me to go a lot harder. Because I'm like, if I'm as privileged as I am today as yeah. a Black woman, then and they did it back then, then yeah. I really don't have any excuse, honestly. None of us do. Absolutely. And that's that's pretty much what I got out of it as well. I was inspired by basically her tenacity and her willingness to continue no matter what. I mean, there were so many obstacles that she faced that we don't face today, but there are similar obstacles that she faced that we still face today. And that's kind of sad that we still face, there's still colorism. In 2020. There's still, yes, there's still racism in 2020. Um, and there's still um, people out there that still don't believe that women are equal or are powerful enough to run companies, even though we have examples we like her and plenty of other women to show yeah. that uh, we're capable of doing this. Exactly. So um, I will say that another thing that uh, I got out of it because I've been an entrepreneur for a really, really long time. And I was just paying attention to, her really not listening to people around her and kind of sort of shutting people yes. out. And yes. that was making people really not interested in supporting her and continuing to go hard for her. And it made me realize that sometimes pursuing your dreams, you have to be considerate of everybody else around you. Yeah. Um, because you can become very, I mean, I know about having tunnel vision because I've had it and I still have it. Um, but you still have to be cognizant of those around you mm -hmm. um, because it's not only their job to um, be supportive along your journey and support your goals, but you also have to still show them that you love and support them too. And right. they're just as important as um, your business or your brand that you're building. Yeah, I agree. I agree because you definitely need a support system. I mean, nobody can do it alone like although it was her brand she still yeah. had the support and the help of her family like without them she wouldn't have gotten anywhere and so I think it was important to show that side although my issue is is that like I know it's loosely based but I, I still have to question like how much of it was just like factual so I'm right. curious to see like if this will birth another documentary or really a biopic you know I'm yeah like Ava DuVernay will get behind yeah. it and you know <laughs> kind of get a little bit more chill come on Ava we need listen you I know you're out there you're gonna get you're gonna see this because we're <laughs> We we need you, girl. I'm gonna tag you. We're putting it out there in the universe. You're gonna yes, see. Yes, exactly. But I mean, I I did like that, like how they showed, you know, because I mean, it's not always pretty. You right. know, you see the pretty and finished product. It's nice to read about her and you know articles and watch all these documentaries but you don't really know like the everyday struggles when it comes to trying to balance a marriage trying to yeah. balance a family yeah. your children um you know losing friends and yeah. you know seeing who's really there for you and who you can trust with your money and your business and to run mm -hmm. your company mm -hmm. so like although that was very loosely based i'm sure she dealt with a lot of those issues yeah. um, that they, you know, showcased in a miniseries. Absolutely. And the other part that I have questions about that I'm hoping that um, a true documentary will delve into is at the end when they mentioned that there weren't any photos or anything of her husband. Yes. Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. I yeah. mean, I that back in that time, you know, they weren't taking selfies. Yeah, definitely <laughs> not. All the pictures was like, yeah, seriously, exactly. you if know, they or, had a picture. Yeah, they were sitting on tree stumps, or you know how it was. But for them to be as wealthy as they were, I just can't believe that at no time did they ever take yeah, pictures perhaps. together, or at no time did her husband ever take pictures, even afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, with his mistress, and they were in business as well, and they were saying they couldn't find any pictures of them. Right, so I, it's crazy. Oh, what happened to the pictures? I know it's like I don't like. Are we not doing enough digging, or is it just the fact that it just shows us that 
even in today's time, like I know today we all have pictures of, our, of ourselves, but it's important to like document that history because not like it had me thinking about which I've been thinking about for years. Like I really need to sit down with my own grandparents and just sit there yeah. and get their stories because a lot of that older generation and the generations before them they didn't really share in the way we share today. You know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we don't really know what our grandparents went through, you know, cause unless we like really, you know, pester them and just like, you know, kind of be relentless in trying to get their story. But a lot of them aren't just willing and openly ready to share yeah. the hardships they've gone through, whether they were entrepreneurs or just the everyday workers. So it's just important, I think, to really document our own history mm -hmm. within our lives because we have so many hidden figures that we just yes. don't even know about. Like a lot of people yes. are learning about annie malone mm -hmm. which is crazy it's like why did we only learn about madam cj walker growing up and yes. why did we just learn certain facts that weren't really facts back then you know like that she invented the hot comb yeah she definitely you know stepped up the game when it came to the right. hot comb but she didn't right. invent it so why are we learning like things that aren't necessarily true yeah. and why are we just finding out about these hidden figures of our culture and our history you know yeah and i don't really think it has anything to do with our grandparents i think <laughs> i mean i hate to put that out there but i think a part of our history well I, we all know this but a lot of our history has been erased and hidden not by mm -hmm. us yeah ever powers that be and that's what i'm I, I, i'm wondering if that's what happened to the stuff with her husband because i just can't believe that there's all these there's no documentation that yeah, i get what you're saying and there's no documentation of her husband yeah. at all and going back to what you're saying in regards to grandparents and great grandparents i was i have been very blessed and fortunate to have both sides my mom and my dad um that were very big on passing down our family's history so for me i will just speak in regards to myself a lot of times when i speak on panels or when i do interviews a lot of people ask me um where do i get my inspiration from like why do i go so hard it's because i do know my family's history right um you know on my mom's side i had a great aunt that was you know she passed away but she did our entire family tree so i know where my family came from i know See, that's important range. a lot of people don't have yeah. that yeah and you on know, my it's um, yeah my grandmother's side of family like my great aunt she'll be 87 this year and I still have pictures before her dad passed away, which was my great grandfather, my grandmother's father. Um, I know all about his family's history. Like my family was really big on passing down our family's history and legacy. So for me, I go hard because I do know my family's history. I do know my family's legacy. And I just feel like if I'm not the best me that I can be, I'm letting down my family. I'm letting down um, the legacy and the history that they passed down to me. But I do feel like we don't do that enough because there are other like I said like, we have all these hidden you, figures that yeah, we're just they, now learning about you yeah know? they have no idea like where they're from who their family is what their great grandparents or their parents their grandparents parents have done and a lot of times when I tell people that I know a lot about my history on both sides of my family they're like wow that's amazing you it know is. so um but I'm really big on that and that's one of the reasons that I had a lot of questions about the self-made film um, and the history that they, the information that they put out there. And that's one of the reasons that the entire time we were watching the series, we were on our phone Googling stuff like, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> that seems a little, that's how I was. I was like, now a lot of stuff I'm learning for the first time, but is it true? Like some stuff just didn't seem like it was, it just seemed like it was dramatized, you know, like it, it was just, I'm like, did that really happen? And, you know, because I knew a little bit about Annie Malone, but I didn't know, like, enough to just be, like, speaking yeah. on it. So I'm like, I don't know if this is necessarily true. Because I, when I learned about her, I learned that she was actually uh, the first made, first self-made uh, millionaire. You know what I'm saying? And that, you know, I guess, like, Madam C.J. Walker, you can call her, like, her protege in a way. Or yeah. just, like, you know, she's the one, she came after her, kind of learned yeah. from her. And so yeah. just paint it in a different picture in the miniseries. And I'm just like. And the photos that I saw of her didn't look like what they portrayed her. Light as skin and, you know. And I was upset. About, that was my thing. Yeah, I was upset about that. Like, um, you know, because 
as I said, we still have a lot of colorism in our community still in 2020. And, um, you know, as a lighter skin woman, I was watching it like, you don't always have to portray us like that, you know? <laughs> no, and I think what they were trying to do, which from like articles I read, was trying to show like all the different hardships that she had to encounter. But I was like, don't show it in that way to where you're ruining another black woman's legacy. Yeah, because although you like changed her name, like we still know, once you do the research, you still know who were who y'all are talking about like you know the names are similar <laughs> the history is similar you yeah. know so like why paint her in that picture when she, one she wasn't even light-skinned two no. that wasn't what their dispute was about I, i'm still trying to figure out what their dispute was about because many articles just said they had a dispute but yeah. like if that's not it you can show it in another way like maybe through her childhood like maybe she had a teacher or something <laughs> that you know was colorist and said some mean things to her she had a customer that didn't believe in her like show it in a different way don't show it yeah. in like ruining I, annie's uh legacy like that yeah. that was just kind of tacky to me absolutely so anybody that's joined in thank you guys for tuning in i'm cream and <laughs> yeah yeah and uh we are discussing this self-made netflix film and talking about women empowerment and entrepreneurship um so going back to what you were saying i just I, I just felt like that was a bad way of trying to push um, Madam C.J. Walker's um, legacy by putting one, because um, it was like you were, you're putting one whole set of Black women down in order to lift up another set of Black women. Yeah, and and I, like, I just don't believe it. And I understand it. there's colorism, but... I just didn't like where the entire time it was kind of like like her husband cheated with a light skinned lady, the lady that was like the focus that like was her was rival like was like her mind. Yeah, it was just like it just made it seem like you know the light skinned woman was the antagonist the entire yeah uh, I didn't I didn't necessarily like that movie, either. and they barely it was like they had the lynching and then they had like a few things but it was like they didn't really because I feel they made it seem like light-skinned women were worse than racism back then they made it yeah. seem like light -skinned women gave dark-skinned women more grief than just being black right. and you know like they were meaner than all the white men and all the white ladies and i'm just right. like why are they painting the picture like this that was the i would say one of the main things that i didn't really like about the the special was just like yes there's colorism but does she have to be the only bad guy? And then her husband and does every so light skinned woman angry. have to be the only bad person? Like, oh, you please know? stop. Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> like that to me, like, you know, I enjoy history and learn, especially learning about our history and culture. Like, yeah. that's like part of my life's mission. Yeah. But, like, there was colorism back then because, you know, we have the black elite and things like that. So, sure, yes, there were some light-skinned women and men and even some brown-skinned, you know, women. We had brown paper bag tests and yeah, that's the issue that still is going on in our community to this day. So, yeah, you can mm -hmm. highlight that, but like you said, I'm sure not every light-skinned woman felt that way. You know what I'm saying? Because even when right. I look at my family tree, like, I, I mean, there are we got all different shades in my family and mm -hmm. I know for a fact like my grandmother is light skin I know for a fact when she was growing up in that time she was not a colorist you know what I'm saying so you can't, yeah. you can't try to paint the picture that every uh black light-skinned female was you know bad or was had okay. that issue yeah it's like yeah some like I said you could showcase it but is that the truth and my thing is again like Annie Malone herself wasn't even light-skinned that wasn't even their dispute so why put it that way like why tarnish one legacy to build up the other like there's a way Absolutely. to showcase realism and disputes without lying and putting that on us because we know not everybody's going to do their research and yes we all have a responsibility to do so but at the same time you have a responsibility as a filmmaker and a producer to tell the truth. And it's just like, if you're not going to tell the truth, then why are we doing this? You know? Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, like I said, again, um, I can see having one 
it, like you said, showcasing it a little bit because that is something that's still going on in our community. Mm -hmm. That's something that was big back then, mm -hmm. people passing. But at the same time, it's, it kind of made it seem like to me that they were being really hard on. But I do like that they did showcase that just because she was light skinned, it didn't make her life more amazing. Be better, right. Like, it did show that she, that in the beginning, it seemed like her skin tone and the type of, and her, you know, the texture of her hair gave her somewhat of an advantage. Mm -hmm. But I do like that they tried their best to showcase that at times that kind of was held against her. It's kind of like everyone made her feel like, well, you look like this and your hair looks like that. Your life is amazing. Mm -hmm. But behind the scenes, she didn't have an amazing life. So yeah. I will say, I do appreciate them putting that in there because there are people who do think that you have an light advantage. Skin, yeah, that light skin privilege is as high as having white privilege. And it's not. And it's not. It's not. It may get you a step further in the door, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't gonna make a difference. They Listen. still gonna treat you like trash, you know what I'm saying? Like the only you may be the face of this product, but behind closed doors, you still getting treated like trash, just like the rest of Thank us. You. you know, it's just your features that people admire because they're closer to Eurocentric features and you know values and beauty standards. But it's just like, listen, we're all black. We they, all still they get treated like the N word. They are talking about all of us as a whole. Exactly. <laughs> they don't separate and say. All of the black people that are this complexion, you're in words. No, people that are racist are racist, period. They have their set of people that they want to be racist towards, and they don't separate you by the level of melanin that you have. If you have yeah. melanin, then you are part of that N-word group. And that's just something that I feel like we need to recognize. It doesn't matter how much or how, or how little of melanin that you have. To certain people, we're still the same level mm -hmm. of. And the thing is, like, we're all black. Like, we <laughs> all are going through the same struggle. So yes. it's just, I just think it's just the mentality that we were kind of just forced and just used yeah. to having. Even to this yeah. day, you know, we used to do team light skin, team dark skin, team brown skin. It's just like, why are we doing that? We don't even know Please why stop. we're doing that. But it's just something that's just been passed down. You know, yeah. and it's just a certain way of thinking that a lot of people have, unfortunately. So, I mean. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is that a lot of times um, people don't understand somewhat of the pressure that it puts on some people. Because just like you can't help that you're born. People can't help they're born black. People can't help that they're born white or whatever race that they are. You can't help it. You can't help what complexion your skin is. But a lot of times, like, I'm not going to even like myself. Like, I, I will wear more tanned foundation i will you know tan and do all these different things and that's in my family and friends always laugh at me i'm like i'm a proud um dark skinned woman they be like girl if you don't sit down <laughs> they like sit down yeah <laughs> because it's just like a lot there's been so many things out there that portray dark skinned women as what they portrayed them as in this film that a lot of times you feel like you want to turn down your complexion you want to tune it down you want to mm -hmm. you know you want to tan and you want to wear a darker foundation and you want to wear bronzer because you're just like because you don't want people to think that that's who that's you are you, you mean, want yeah. people to think that that's how you present yourself when you walk into the room like you want people to get to know you first and not think I mean it's the same as being brown skin I'm pretty sure you don't the first thing is you don't want people to just automatically assume that you are this type of person just because when you come in, they see the complexion of your skin, yeah. you know? And a lot of times, like I said, I always make myself way more brown, even right now, than I am because it's just like, I just don't want people to automatically see me as that. I want them to see all the stuff yeah. that I do and who I am on the inside and how much I'm here to empower and inspire and uplift other women. And, and uh, it doesn't really matter how much melanin you have or don't have, but a lot, I, I, but, I, but like we said, I mean, I know that they have to talk about these things because these things happen and colorism is still here, but 
It's definitely a conversation that we need to have because we, yeah. we still haven't really had. We need to have it the right way, though. It has to be yeah. the right way. Yeah, it doesn't need to be based on lies, and it needs to be both sides of the story. Like, yes, yeah. there were, you know, males and females back then who did think they were better because they were they you could know, they felt more superior, or they felt closer to whiteness because of yeah. the color of the skin. And it's not really just the color of your skin; it's your features because you have a looser curl pattern you know or because your nose is more slimmer and you know you don't have these big full lips which are all features that people are paying for today that's the topic this for another day i guess okay, okay. <laughs> they are paying for this sis. paying to look like us but you know absolutely <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's just it's just a conversation that we do need to have you know I was reading a book called The Black Elite um a few months ago and it was just very interesting to just figure out like just to because, kind of see both sides of it you know where yeah. the author of the book you know kind of felt discriminated against even though he had light skin um because you know he still had black features you know what i'm saying although he had this lighter skin his hair was still coarse you know he still had you know a wide nose and you know so even though he was amongst the black elite you know going to like debutantes and you know being in jack and jill and all these other programs that were for the elite blacks um he still felt discriminated against within that circle so it's just a lot it's layers it's a There's lot Layers to this. Too. There's layers to our community. And people really don't is. know that. And I just want, at least I want to come out. Ava, as we, you know, Ava, hey. <laughs> we need real storytellers. We need the real with, story. Yes. Come out with something that's that's a real story and something that's yeah. really going to go in depth um, into the story of our community and and because there's like so our history in the right way because i also read too that like a lot of the producers they didn't want to paint like this cookie cutter um image of the characters because they said like you know a lot of time in our movies and black movies that we try to always paint ourselves as so good and i feel like that is a struggle too within a, in a lot of black films but i feel like you don't have to do that when you stick to the truth and when you stick to the yeah. real story and when i was yeah. reading up on all three of these women on annie malone madam cj walker and her daughter uh alayla or however you say her name walker I'm like that. It's enough right there. Yeah. yeah. I'm like it's enough within their stories. Um, they don't have to make it. You don't have to embellish. Sorry, girl. <laughs> That's okay. You're outside. <laughs> but it's enough to where um, you don't necessarily have to embellish or anything. You know, where you can just simply just tell the truth and stick to the real story i'm like it's a lot to tell with being a black woman in the early 1900s post-slavery and being a millionaire you like got everything going against you at that time like white women weren't even doing this you were the first self-made millionaire period you know yeah. like not first black woman first black or white woman you know what i'm saying so it's just yeah. like what and then you had two at the time you know you had yeah. annie malone who had a rolls royce back then like come on yeah. got first and thing, in her picture the thing that to me is very disheartening is you had two black women that were basically the only women uh millionaires back then and they couldn't get along it's like what is and wrong I, that, with that? That's my thing. I'm like, is that even, like, of course we know. We're going to be realistic about it. Of course we know that there's going to be a competition, whether you're a male or a female. But right. to sit here and try to act like they were just trying to tarnish each other's legacies and each other's companies, I just don't feel like that was simply the case. Like, I'm sure they right. had their issues. I'm sure there was a dispute, especially, again, you know, when it comes to, who so who's formula you know what i'm saying i know annie malone had to get hers patent after madam yeah. cj walker came along 
but it's just like it's just like today in today's beauty industry you got all these makeup brands but my makeup brand is gonna stand out against yours because i'm gonna do it differently it doesn't mean we both can't shine it doesn't mean that we both can't be up here which they both proved that they both could be up here they employ absolutely thousands of black women had schools and training classes i mean like i just factories why you had factories so like, I'm like, who, why who can you guys get along? Sense. Like, what, what more did you guys need that made you guys not be best friends? Like, right? I, we just, do, I don't get it. But we do that now, though. Like, it's that's what I'm saying. It's just sad that this was back in the 1900s. It's 2020, and we're still doing the same things to each other. Yeah, and that's why we're I feel still- like it was important to tell the truth because you have young women entrepreneurs, especially in today's time where everybody's trying to get a side hustle, become an entrepreneur. You got girls that are in high school that are doing makeup and selling lashes and all types of things. They're watching yeah. this. They don't need to see that side. You know, to they can see the disputes and how they handled it as women back then then but they don't need to see that i'm literally following you to uh illinois or indianapolis i can't remember which it was indianapolis no indian yeah then went to indiana yeah yeah like i i don't need like that's not true she did not follow her she already had her own college and things going on so it's just like yes i'm sure they had disputes if we're being realistic i'm sure there were disputes but if they weren't necessarily tearing each other down there's no need to show that like why do our women characters always have to tear each other down you know like especially to be showing this to younger generations like it's a lot that we can learn from both women and how to both you know we can both exist without the competition necessarily like i just thought it was tacky we can definitely coexist i mean it's just like what we're doing now like you have your podcast, you're in media, I have my same thing. But it's like, when we come together and we collaborate, it only helps you, me, and all the other women out there that are doing the same thing. Even if they're not doing the same thing that we're doing, but even if they're entrepreneurs or moms or they are someone that's aspiring to be a CEO at the job that they work in, if we continue to show that we can get along and that we support one another, then they'll understand that we are a force to be reckoned with. Like, if you know that you can't come in and pit like this Black woman against this Black woman and we're going to work together no matter what, then we're going to win. And they know that they can't win. But it's so easy for them to portray us that way because a lot of us are like that in real life. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And I think, and I'm like, I don't know. I just have to question, like, are we really like that in real life? Or are we just being portrayed that way in TV? Like like I said, of course, being realistic, there are going to be disputes. And you do have some women that don't see the greater picture. But then you also have women that, do do that and that's never showcased that's never highlighted so that's why yeah. i understand like if you have this story why choose to go down that route which is false you know if you mm-hmm. read articles watch the real documentaries on these women why choose to go down that way it just seems like there's an agenda in my opinion you know every time that you showcase black women it always has to be in a negative light it can't ever just be what it really is like i'm not we saying that you just have to pay millions pictures. you know like right. we got you can't, a long you can't, like, you can't just list. show that it has to be yeah. oh one was trying to tear the other down and it was this nasty cat fight like what was that little boxing scene about what was that <laughs> what because was that? that's what i was trying to tell you that i didn't like i just felt like <sighs> because if this was supposed to empower women and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna I'm just going to put it out there. I feel like a lot of times the whole light skin privilege thing, it's like we can always talk negative about you light skin girls because you have this privilege. So we can portray you how we want to portray you um, because you don't need us or anybody else to empower you because the whole world empowers you. And to me, I felt like it was them trying to make, um, a statement like look at look at what she did she fought the big bad light-skinned lady to make it to yeah. to win because if you noticed she was only boxing the her she didn't box her husband she wasn't boxing men she wasn't boxing older white men and then 
they, she she was like infatuated with Rockefeller, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but like she was nice to him. She went next door, you know, she wanted to live next That's to him. Like, oh, that really... And her fight scene was with another woman. It was like with another black woman and not just that, but a light skinned lady. And it was just like, it was almost like they wanted you to get behind this fight and they wanted you to feel um, really good because the dark skinned lady beat the light skinned lady. Like she won. And it's just like, what, <laughs> what was that about? Why? It's like, Why? There's so many other things that I'm pretty sure she had to fight to make it in the 1900s that a light skinned lady with really pretty hair was like the least of her worries. I mean, I can understand because she was selling hair products. But and I'm sure that was the insecurity of hers, you know, like yeah. I like but my thing is just showcase it in the proper way. And I, I'm not even yeah. gonna say the proper way. So there's no I if it's the saying. truth, okay. Showcase the yeah. truth, but it's not the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, there could have been other ways. Like I understand they have creative liberties and you know, so you're gonna have to, especially when you're telling the story, you're gonna have to add and fill in gaps, you know in certain parts of the story but fill in the gaps where like I said it could have been a teacher that maybe told her she didn't have the look to be in the beauty industry it could have you know because I'm sure there were people that made her feel a certain way or you know that kind of poked on that insecurity you know she already had hair loss issues you know she was a washerwoman she you know got married and pregnant at the age of 14 I believe husband yes. died at age 20 you know so I'm sure she felt low and insecure and you know skin color was a big issue so she wasn't you know a lighter skinned woman which that was being presented as you know the epitome the the best way to get to whiteness not like that you necessarily had to be this but if you wanted to kind of live like the whites do you didn't you gotta get this you gotta have this lighter skin you gotta have this type of uh hair um texture and i'm sure like that ate up her insecurities but you can't create a but story they've made that's not that, they've made that like the biggest obstacle ever like they yeah made with that, the walker girl and i'm like the walker girl the the girl that her husband cheated with you know her rival it was just like like i'm sure she came across people like that in her life but Again. I just can't see that being her one and only major struggle, you yeah. know, because uh, I don't know. So hopefully, you know, they, Ava, <laughs> he put her out there, you know, she comes and she makes a different documentary. So tell yeah. me what you thought about um, the actors and actresses that they chose to play the characters. I know a lot of people... Um had a few issues with um, certain people that play certain roles. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Tiffany Haddish fan. Let me just go ahead and put that out there. I really like her and I support her, but I just feel, and I feel like she's still growing as an actress. Like yeah. It's one thing to be a comedian, but as an actor, you know, I'm, I, she's still growing in that lane. Yes. And I just felt like, first, when I first saw her in the movie, I was just like, okay, I'm not going to take this serious. You know, but I do that. I tend to do that a lot of times because I did that with Issa Rae with the photograph. I was like, I can't take Issa serious. Like, but yeah. she proved me wrong after I watched the movie. I was like, oh, my gosh, she did really good. And I love that movie. So I was hoping to get the same thing with Tiffany. And although, like, throughout the series, she did start to, like, grow on me. And I could kind of see what they were trying to do because the real Layla uh Alil Lilia how do you say her name it was is Lilia Lilia it was Lelia and then changed it to Ah Lelia yeah so the real uh character that she played you know I know she was very joyous and lighthearted and fun and you know she was considered to be like a socialite during the Harlem Renaissance so I get what they were trying to you know display you know yeah. there's even like a slight resemblance between the real life character and tiffany haddish mm -hmm. but i just don't i feel like she left too much of herself in the role and sometimes you know you're gonna have a little bit of yourself with yeah. the role but i felt like it was a little bit too much of herself like yeah it wasn't get, as convincing to me i get where you're coming from but i will say this i was actually happy to see her in a different role because i feel like most of the no, time she's the same person and all yeah. her and 
you know, as you said, like people have to be given opportunities in order to grow and they have to be given opportunities to show themselves as a different character. Yeah. So I'm really happy that they at least gave her the opportunity to work on her range. Because yeah. Because if she keeps being cast in the same roles and we're going to just keep seeing her as the same person. And yeah. I just feel every and that time kind of gets a little tired too yeah i feel like every time she hosts something i feel like every time someone interviews her it's every always time someone cast her for a movie they make her be this not make but they pretty much have her be the exact same person so yeah, i will say that i was happy to see her playing something different you know yeah. be ready because she's ready in every single movie you know a lot of times people have <laughs> because she's always playing in movies where her husband or her significant other is a white guy and she's the only black lady and this is over you know, yeah with. so i was happy to see her play someone different mm -hmm. and um and be in a movie of this capacity or a series of this capacity so i was very proud to see her in that way but i can also understand where people um, and I think because it was Tiffany Haddish and we've seen her be the same she ready person for so long that it was kind of hard seeing her as something else. Yeah. So the whole time you were watching it, all you saw was Tiffany Haddish. It was like, this is Tiffany Haddish. I know. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. I was just like, like, I mean, I know we don't know the real character and like, yeah. you know, how she really was. But, and like I said, I can see why they chose her just because of the certain light that she yeah. has and that certain like, you know, fun spirit. And like I said, there's a slight resemblance, but I just, I don't know, I just wasn't as convinced, but she did grow on me, like I said, like towards yeah. the end and stuff as time went on, I was just like, okay, okay. I, I see you, Tiffany. I see you. Um, but I thought the other characters, I thought they all um, did well. You know, they're, they did what they came to do. I felt like, I felt like Octavia was great. I felt but like she's Liz, like, hey, yeah, did you good. expect any less than that? No, Come on. Never, this never. She she never disappoints. She's always um she's always good. So it's crazy though. Like I always thought of Madam CJ Walker to be played by like Queen Latifah. So hopefully like Oh yeah. Ava 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 girl, put me on a casting board. Let me <laughs> I always felt like a queen. Latifah. Put you on the casting like, board. Let me do the interviews. Like, come on, girl. Hi, <laughs> black women. No, I'm just playing. But, um, but for real, I just felt like you know. Um, I felt like she did good. You know, like she, I feel like she really um, did the character justice and show how determined she was and how tenacious yeah. she was. Um, I thought Blair Underwood did what he always did. You know. I mean, I, I was rooting for I, we were rooting for you. I just knew. I just knew I'm like, oh he a good husband. He, he still know, was a good husband. He still he was, was a good husband. A good husband. But, but I mean They cast him for for to do what he normally does. Yeah, <laughs> in movies he's be the bad guy. Be the bad guy. Yeah. He's always the bad guy. And he's really a nice guy in real life. Like yeah, you know, he is. from his interviews, he's the complete opposite. But um I know some people were a little upset, you know, saying how um, black men were portrayed as well. That's always, you know, a hot button. Um, yeah. I thought he did well. Like I said, I need to uh, really research each character. Um, I really want to research CJ. Um, I don't doubt that he cheated, you know, especially when... Yeah. Back then, when you're used to women playing women's roles, cooking and yeah. cleaning and doing, like, wifely duties, which, what yeah. is that for real? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're used to women being a certain way, and, you know, she, when you're a boss like that, you know, and you just determined on your business, she and you focus, and you got tunnel vision, other things are going to lack, unfortunately, you know. Yeah. But it was nice to see, like, his family support her as well. And, you know, even the granddad, you know, be in support of her. Um, yeah. But unfortunately, since I questioned a lot of other stuff, I got to question how true everything. all of that was, too. I got to question. You got to question yeah. everything. So. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So we're going to take it back. Everybody that's tuned in right now, uh, of course, you guys know I'm Cream. This is Yaya. We were discussing um, the Netflix series Self Made, which is based on the Madam C.J. Walker story. And we're talking about women empowerment, you know, especially for black women. That, I mean, I'm all for women empowerment, but I'm even more for uh, uplifting, inspiring, and empowering women who look just like me. Not light skin, but just black. Okay. Black. All shades. All shades. All black. shades. All shades. So tell everyone what you do again. Um, give them your social media handle so they can keep up with your podcast and just all the other plethora of things that you do. So um, my name is Samaya, but I go by Yaya. Um, yeah. Yeah. So my Instagram is Yaya Aliyah. I don't think there's an underscore, but we can tell. No, it's the <laughs> No underscore. <laughs> yeah, it's just Yaya Aaliyah. So Y A A F Y A H A L I A. I am one of the founders of Books and Brunch, uh, which is here in Birmingham, Alabama. But we do um, have members in like Atlanta, New Jersey, um, and it's basically a safe place for Black women to come read and pretty much do that. What we're doing now, just dissect different books and just talk related to our personal experiences. We read books by Black authors, um, just to really learn more about us. Basically, what we're doing here, you know. Um, yeah. I also have my podcast, the Candidly Yaya podcast, where I talk about the millennial experience, the woman experience, and the black experience, because I am all three. And so I just have <laughs> a lot of my different friends and just people come on to just talk about, you know, just societal issues and the things that us millennials go through and, you know, becoming an entrepreneur and just really having your own brand. It's just really focused on that. Um, and I also work with Media Girls Network which is based in Atlanta and it's a community of women journalists and multimedia hyphenates and just, you know, women empowerment again. So I do yeah. interviews with them. I write a blog post um, and I make a lot of playlists, which I just made one. So y'all go download it from Apple yeah. Music and Title. Yes, yes, yes. She made some playlists. Thank you, Listen. boo. I've saved a lot of the playlists, so. Thank you. I you love got- music. Like, music. <laughs> And music now is that everyone is, me too, I love music too, which is one of the reasons that I actually um, started, well, yeah, one of the reasons that I started my radio station, like, what, what is this, I think this is our seventh year, but um, that, 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 let me plug myself, you know. Yeah, plug yourself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know, I own 216B Radio, so make sure you guys follow us. Um, official 216 beat radio. You can go to 216beat.com to get all the information about all the shows, um, all of the DJs and radio hosts and podcasts that I have um, on my staff. I'm also on TET Entertainment LLC. We do media marketing, um, brand management, a little bit of PR. So um, you can follow us um, on our page, TET Entertainment. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I have my podcast. You guys know I do coffee with cream. Do um, a little bit of everything. Just everything. Just listen. Just follow me and like my post and talk to me and I'll talk back to you. But um, my biggest thing is just all about uh, inspiring, empowering, and uplifting, you know, like I said, Black women and just making us uh, feel good about ourselves and just being the best us, best versions of us that we can possibly be. That's so important to me more than any other yeah. title or whatever that I have. That's the most important thing to me is I have a daughter and um, uh, two daughters. And that's just important to me for them to see me and how I interact with other women that look exactly like me, because then that encourages them to do the same thing. Okay. So, um, you know, as you said, there are women and young women and children and nieces and nephews and different things that are looking at us to see how they should interact with their fellow um you know, women, men, and their their uh, associates and things like that. So I just want to be a good example, as good of an example as I can possibly be. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I'm the I'm the best. No, no one's perfect, but I mean, at least I'm cognizant of the vibes that I put out there. And so yeah. the main thing for me is just to spread positive vibes. That's about it. So that's why we're doing this. I really appreciate you for being on Coffee with Cream today. 
Oh wait, your girl is there on there. Um, I really appreciate. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you for being uh, on Coffee with Cream today. I hope everyone that tuned in um, enjoyed the conversation, and um, hopefully, you can come on again. Like this quarantine and chill has been amazing. I don't know about everyone else, but this quarantine and chill has been amazing. I'm a creative yeah, for creatives. I was gonna say, like, I'm a very, very creative person. So this is just. It's in nothing but like boost up my creativity. And that's what I want to bring back. Uh we're quarantined and chilling, guys. So make sure you go to Yaya's page and download her podcast. Mm -hmm. Also download her playlists because more than exactly. anything, we need music right now. <laughs> we do, we do. And shout out to all the healthcare professionals. I'm also in the healthcare field. I work at a dentist office. And, okay. you know, there's people out here still working. You know, I happen to be off today, but, you know, still out here yeah. working it out, still out here, you know, treating patients. And it's a little bit different from my field. But for yeah. definitely people that work at, like, hospitals and things, like, yes. shout out to, shout out to all the people that work in the the, the jobs they um, deem uh, necessities, essential. Mm -hmm. essential jobs. Um, also, to shout out to, I want to shout out because my family runs um, a daycare center. We we're part of running a daycare center. And here in Ohio, they didn't close out any of the daycares or the head starts. And some of the centers are being deemed as pandemic. Uh, I forget how what they called it, but it's kind of.